<laughs> that is I don't know where to start this video here but I think it's important information for you out there using Victron gear um, so I have to start I have to jump into this story and then add around it to make this round you may remember the issue I had with the multi plus and it shut down before the actual BMS shut down and there was no threshold set in the in the multi plus to actually shut down but it did it and nobody knows why and I posted this in the Victron community forum as well and asked for advice there and I got a few responses from different people out there and um, one response was to um, to take these MPPT controllers out of the smart Bluetooth network. All these um, MPPT charge controllers plus the smart shunt inside our battery shelf here are connected via a Bluetooth network and the smart shunt delivers voltage and current readings to the solar charge controllers. So whatever voltage drop we have here on the cables and fuses and other equipment, it doesn't really matter because they're all getting the same voltage reading directly from the battery through the smart shunt. And one of the comments I got um, in regards to the MultiPlus shutting down was to turn off this smart Bluetooth network because I had activated DVCC to limit the charge current into our battery. So remember, I made a video about the limiting charge current function of the DVCC. If you have lead acid batteries and have a very big solar array, you have to limit your charge current, otherwise you're blowing up your, your AGM or, or flooded batteries then. So these two stories, the limiting charge current with the DVCC turned on, plus the multi-plus issue we had, they are tying into this and I have changed certain settings as per advice on this forum but also under my video because someone else said well if you have DVCC turned on turn off the shared voltage sense turn off the shared current sense and turn off the shared temperature sense so I did all that as well well and then Afterwards, at some stage, these problems occurred. Because we had fairly cloudy weather, I didn't fully charge the battery for quite a while. But now, you know, sunny... Uh, by the way, welcome back to another video here from the off -grid garage in sunny hot Australia. It is sunny hot. Let's have a quick look at the weather situation today. Ah, oh, look at this. Beautiful. We probably have close to 150 amps or something outside. 166 amps and we've got the air condition running inside the house pulling 2 kilowatts. So this is our 200 amps I have set in the DVCC. Well guys, welcome back. So I've turned all this off. I, I disconnected the solar charge controllers from the smart network, disconnected the smart shunt from the smart network and turned off this voltage, current and temperature sense in the DVCC. And this is not good. This is not good. I have seen this now for the last three or four days since I fully charged the battery every single day or almost close to it, 90-95%. And the solar charge controllers, they are doing a weird thing now. So in here, for example, in the Big Shed solar charge controller, it says actually the status is bulk. But if we have a look in the remote console, it still says external control and it's a slave because it's still connected to the DVCC system of the Venus OS. So it listens to the settings we have set in the DVCC. For example, all these charge controllers reduce the current to 200 amp max to charge the battery all in total. But I'll show you the problem what I have, what I found for the last three days. Okay, so we are now in the VRM advanced up here we can see the uh, Victron Smart Shunt, which sits close to the battery. So this measures actually the most accurate voltage of our vertical bus bar, where all the three different banks are connected to. And it shows 54.44 uh, volts. If we have a look in one of these solar charge controllers, the Big Shed, for example, it measures 54.6 volts. So you can see this voltage and this voltage here are different, right? And this is around 0.3 to 0.7 volts I have seen, depending how fast we are charging. And I guess these are cable losses and losses to the breakers and connections, everything we have. 
So there is a difference, of course, between what we are measuring at the battery and what the solar charge controller sees up there, somewhere on the wall, and there are cables and all this shit in between, you know. And if we go further down to the next solar charge controller here, 55.05, and look at these two, for example, they are different again to each other. Checking the third one, see a different voltage again. And so every solar charge controller now measures the voltage itself. And this could lead to a bit of a problem because, because you know, I have set 55.2 uh, volt in the solar charge controllers for absorption. So as soon as the solar charge controller hits this voltage, it goes into absorption. It does what we told him, but this does not mean our battery is at 55.2 volts. So there could be a 0.5 to 0.7 volt difference in between these voltages. And let's have a quick look here. Yesterday, the day before it was, I think, I have actually never reached the 55.2 volts here and we have charged the battery to only around 88% when this issue occurred. And that's why I have added these uh, three widgets here at the end so we can see this, this, the, the uh, state the solar charge controller is in. So during the night it's off and then we can see it turns on to bulk and then at some stage it goes into absorption and then it goes into float as well as a third option then. So this is the situation we have at the moment. It doesn't look too bad. It doesn't affect anything. We are charging with full power depending on the cloud situation. It's just a cloud. Okay, I guess uh, I'll monitor this over the day and whenever the situation occurs, I'll um, talk to you again. I know this is a long intro, I'm sorry for that, but you know, you need to get the story before, before you actually see what's happening here. And because neither of the persons who recommend to turn off the smart network, nor the other person who recommend to turn everything off in the DVCC is 100% right, but they are also not 100% wrong. It is something in between, and I wanted to show you in this video here how to set this up correctly and make it work if you have, if you observe similar issues with your system. So we have now hit absorption stage with all four solar charge controllers. So all of them have seen the 55.2 volts now, but this is not our battery voltage. Let's have a look. So here we can see 55.2 volts and again here 55.25, 55.22, 55.18. So all solar charge controllers are measuring a different voltage. And uh, the battery is only at 54.9, so there's 0.3 volts of a difference. So you can see now here in the, in the status page of the solar charge controllers, we are now entering absorption stage with all for solar charge controllers. So far, not a big problem. You can see here, we are still charging full blast, whatever the solar panels can produce. And this is now where it gets a bit wonky already because usually absorption stage means we keep the voltage constant and then the current in the battery goes, lo goes slowly down. But the solar charge controllers have started this process already, but the battery is not there yet. So we have actually started too early, but the battery can still take a bit. There's 5% missing. That's two and a half kilowatt hours. You can see the whole battery is only being charged with 200 watts from all four solar charge controllers. Look at our battery charging idle. It's idling now. See, the battery does not get charged anymore. And the last three days when we had the sun back, I could not fully charge the battery anymore. As you can see, we would charge to 55.2 but we are not reaching that anymore because there's this voltage difference between the solar charge controllers and the battery. 2.5 amps outside, I mean, come on, really? And we still have two and a half kilowatt hours to charge. So this is not going to work. So, and this is now exactly what I could see the last three days that one solar charge controller turns off the first because it thinks the absorption time is over and we can go to float now, while the other three are still trying to reach the 55.2 volts. And, and the problem is now here that at some stage, the next solar charge controller will go into float. So we are losing another energy source. And then eventually the third one as well. And the last one will never go to float because it thinks we are far too low with the voltage and it keeps trying to reach this 
55.2 volt, this absorption voltage, while the other three are not doing anything anymore. So they are completely out of sync now. They are not working as one controller anymore, but as four individual controllers. So this is this is the perfect example. Um, by the way, it is now the next day because yesterday it didn't quite work because I had too much load connected, but today it's not too hot, so I didn't have the aircon on. I'm not charging the car. Everything is under control. And what we can see today is bulk blue light, absorption, absorption, absorption. See, they are not acting as one charge controller. They are all standalone basically now. And um, this is for half an hour now. So let's give it another half an hour and we will see these three charge controllers going into float. So what that means is they basically turn off charging because they want to lower the voltage of the battery, right? But they can't because one is still in bulk or maybe in absorption by then and tries to keep the voltage up. So they want to reduce the voltage, but this one wants to keep charging. Total chaos. So, all right. So I'm now logged into the remote console of the um, off-grid garage. And we can see the shared voltage sense is turned off. And this is exactly why these solar charge controllers are basically out of sync. Because they can't measure the voltage of the battery correctly. And you can see here the battery is only charged with 200 watts. Sometimes I can see under 20 watts, zero, bit of negative. So let me turn on the voltage sense here. Right? And you watch the overall output of our solar system. Okay, it is now turned on. So 7.2 kilowatts, 7.4, 7.7, 7.8, 8.1, See how it's going up? And here we, again we have like 1800 watts again into the battery while before it was like 200, 250 watts only. The next day. So, um, here's now the situation. Two solar charge controllers are still in bulk. Two are in float. What? Okay, what we can see now is three solar charge controllers are in float and one is still trying to reach the 54 point, uh, the 55.2 volt absorption voltage. But the load is too large, so the battery actually gets discharged now. Three of the four solar charge controllers don't even bother and this is just not good. So this was now the situation with the voltage sense turned on, but still all the solar charge controllers act as standalone devices. This situation may not occur if you have a smart BMS, but I'm not sure about this. So now we are recharging the battery slowly with one kilowatt. But do we get the 55.2? Depending, now nah, there's another cloud coming, power goes down. See, this is, the, this is the problem. We've got four solar charge controllers and two, and two of them are not doing anything. I think this is a bad situation and we will never fully charge the battery, the balancer won't kick in and the smart shunt will not reset to 100%, not recalibrate because we are not hitting the 55.2 volts for long enough. So I would say this is a fail. So turning on the shared voltage sense is not enough to keep the charge controllers connected. So I would say let's um, let's turn off the shared voltage sense again and put all the solar charge controllers and the smart shunt in the Bluetooth smart network again. So they're communicating with each other, they're acting as one solar charge controller and they're getting voltage and current readings directly from the smart shunt. So this is basically the same as the voltage sense, just better. Because we won't have this shit anymore here. And again, I'm not sure if this is actually solved by connecting a smart BMS. I don't know, you tell me. How is your system reacting when you have multiple MPPTs connected and have a smart BMS, whatever it is?
Do you see things like this as well, that some solar charge controllers turn off because they think, because they reach the float or absorption voltage earlier than others? Eh. Anyway, this, this is not good. If I introduce more load now, it will even go down. We are discharging the battery then. Um, okay, it is now the next day again. And um, we have changed the settings back and integrated all four solar charge controllers into the smart network again. And they have just, I missed it by a second, and they have just turned on the uh, absorption, all of them synchronized. And the carport is our master controller. So as soon as this one reaches 55.2, it takes all the other ones with it into absorption mode. And the same will happen in about an hour. They will all turn on float mode at the same time. So we are basically back to where we were before we changed all the settings as per recommendations by forum members and viewers of my channel. Yeah, and then we can see 55.3 at the moment. But I would really recommend to set up this VE smart network if you have at least one solar charge controllers and a smart shunt or a battery monitor from Victron. Connect them together and they will synchronize voltage and current readings and you get a far better and more consistent result with your charging. Okay, so far this test from the last couple of days. Um, I would be very interested if you have more than one solar charge controller in your system and have also a smart BMS or how synchronized do your solar charge controllers work when connected to a smart BMS? Are they all going into absorption mode at the same time and into float at the same time? Or do you see a different charging stage of the solar charge controllers as well? Even they are connected to a BMS and should be synchronized somehow. So leave your comments down below. I'm really keen to find out because I don't have a smart BMS connected to my system here. And the system with the smart BMS has only one solar charge controller so far. So I cannot actually tell you what is going on when this is all connected, but I'm sure we've got plenty of people here in the community who have this set up and can share their experience. Okay guys, so far this video from today and the last couple of days, like probably one and a half weeks since I started filming this, it's sometimes hard to get the exact conditions outside with the sun and the load and then I was not here was working and so it took a while to get this all together hopefully this video makes sense after I Frankenstein everything together thanks for watching thanks for all your great support here on the channel thank you for all your generous donations much appreciated and until the next video guys stay charged stay safe and thanks again for watching see you then bye bye huh, so glad it's all working again Oh, damn it. I just missed it. Green, 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 green. All synchronized going into float mode. Acting as one controller.